Marine Roberts is an engineered or a re-engineered group. It is gone through a process of right-sizing the group, cost and management structures, and we look forward to entering a new financial year as, as a re-engineered organization. Uh, what we have achieved over the past year or so was to redesign the group's operating model and the management structure, and we have appropriately reduced our overhead cost across the group, including at the corporate office. Now, you will recall that we previously had an operating model which comprised of business platforms, and uh, given the truncated size of the group, we are no longer of the view that this is appropriate for Marion Roberts, and we have done away with the uh, business platform structure, and through doing so, we have removed a layer of executive management and associated cost. The redesigned structure now incorporates four operating companies, and these operating companies are under the leadership of a managing director. These managing directors report directly to myself as the group CEO, and each of these uh, man managing directors are also a member of the group executive committee. So it is, it, it, this new structure has brought um, a flatter organogram uh, in play, and we believe that this is also more effective for managing the business as we move forward. From a cost point of view, we've given considerable effort to uh, analyzing our corporate cost, and uh, we've come through this period by having reduced the cost quite substantially. For the new financial year 2025, we are estimating that our cost will be down by circa 80 to 100 million compared to financial year 2023, and approximately 70 million less uh, than what the cost was for financial year 2024. You'll also see on this, uh, on this slide, the picture is of the Marion Roberts uh, building. Um, it is now called the Interchange Building. It is a building that we lease from Redefine, and we've entered a new lease agreement. And uh, that agreement became effective in September this year, and we now occupy 50% less floor space than what we have occupied previously, and this has given rise to a cost saving of circa 33% on an annual basis. Now this building has got, has got nine floors. Uh, we're occupying two and a half of this and it is a multi-tenanted building and uh, other spaces occupied by other tenants. Just getting back to the corporate cost, uh, you will see on the slide that we've categorized the corporate cost into mainly four categories, corporate cost, group shared services, um, external consulting services, and then also extraordinary fees. And when you look at the total cost, you will see that in 2024, we have already achieved a saving relative to 2023, with a cost for 2024 at about 180 million. And moving into 2025, we expect that cost to reduce further to about 109 million. And the one cost that I would like to um, uh, emphasize is the, um, is the extraordinary fees. Now, these are costs that we have incurred and which were associated with our voluntary administration in Australia, but also managing the deleveraging plan that we have agreed with our lenders in South Africa. Now, at the time that the budget for 2025 was, was put together, and that's the numbers that you see in the forecast column for 2025, we didn't provide for any extraordinary fees, and that was on the assumption that we would have achieved a refinancing of our South African debt by June 2024. Unfortunately, that had not happened um, at the end of June, and we are still in the process of, of, of managing um, an opportunity to refinance that debt. So there will certainly be some costs in 2025 um, associated with uh, this process of deleveraging the business. Um, and we're not sure what that cost is going to be, but if we do succeed in achieving a refinancing over the next couple of months, it will be a very small cost relative to what we incurred in 2024. It's a revitalized group, um, and that really refers to what we have achieved from a deleveraging point of view. Uh, Clough and RUC uh, were lost to the group in December 2022, and these businesses were both strong cash contributors um, to the group as a whole. Now, after we've lost those businesses, obviously there were no cash coming in, from them any longer, and that has left the South African group with a highly geared balance sheet, 
and also a high cost structure relative to the reduced size of the group. And it's for that reason that we had to reduce the cost that I've referred to earlier on one of the earlier slides. Now, as part of this deleveraging process, uh, the board agreed a deleveraging plan with our consortium of South African banks. And this has been communicated to our stakeholders previously. But what that resulted in is enabling the group to reduce its debt, which peaked at 2 billion in April 2023, to the current level of 409 million as at the end of June 2024. That is not the total group debt, but that is a group, it's a debt that we have with our uh, South African banks here in South Africa. So that is a South African debt. Now, part of this deleveraging plan uh, was that by June 2024, this 409 million of debt had to be refinanced with an alternative uh, financial services company. Now, unfortunately, that milestone was not achieved, but we have announced on the 30th of August this year uh, that the board has reached a new agreement with the banking consortium, which provides for that 409 million debt for the repayment date to move out to 31 January 2026. So we have signed a credit approved term sheet and we're currently in the process of finalizing the, the long form agreements. The board has further resolved um, that we will embark on a process to dispose of non-core assets to meet our liability to this banking consortium. And the reason for that is we are not able through our normal uh, trading activity to generate sufficient cash, cash over the, re the remaining period to settle that 409 million by the 31st of January 2026. The only way we can do that is by selling non-core non assets. Um, we are, however, still continuing with our efforts to refinance um, this 409 million debt. And we believe we have made good progress in this regard. And uh, should we be successful with the refinancing, it would not be necessary to dispose on any of the assets. But the point I want to make is, as we've moved through this deleveraging period, we've managed the business without any working capital facilities in South Africa. The 409 million is the remainder uh, that we have on our working capital facilities with the South African Banking Consortium. That is fully drawn. Um, and what that means is we don't have any additional working capital facilities, which has made it extremely difficult to manage our liquidity over the past year or so. And that pressure on liquidity will continue uh, for as long as we, we haven't achieved a position where we have refinanced the South African debt. So hopefully uh, we will get there in the not too far future, but uh, the liquidity pressure that we operate under will continue because uh, we, we're running the business in the absence of any working capital facility until the time that the 409 million has been repaid to the South African banks. Marion Roberts is also a, refo a refocused group. So uh, at this moment in time, following what happened in Australia, uh, we, we focus essentially um, on the mining sector, uh, and that's on the international mining sector. And we do that through our mining company in South Africa, uh, the mining companies that we have in the Americas, and also through uh, the mining company that we have in the Asia Pacific region. Now, a secondary focus for the group is on the renewable energy and power infrastructure markets in South Africa, and we do that through OptiPower. I think our stakeholders will appreciate that the mining businesses have for many, many years really been a cornerstone of the group. Uh, they have been very, very good in, in generating cash, contributing to your earnings, and uh, it's a specialized group of companies, and they are highly regarded in the international mining uh, community. OptiPower, again, is well positioned in what we believe is a promising sector here in South Africa, and that is for renewable energy uh, power generation and also for the uh, um, expected uh, expenditure that will come through ESCOM and through the transmission division of ESCOM as it upgrades its transmission lines and uh, create additional capacity to evacuate the renewable energy that will come from these new renewable energy uh, power plants. The group also delivered, as you would have seen, an improved financial performance for the year under review. That was not only for continuing operations, but also at an attributable income level. Now, we'll re recall in the previous financial year, we had a substantial loss at an attributable income level, and that is because that loss included the impact 
of the deconsolidation of the businesses that we previously had in Australia. We also managed to reduce our debt quite substantially, increased our earnings and we grew the order book.